how to create a WordPress powered website using Bluehost. Let's begin. What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is David. So either you have a Bluehost account or you're thinking of going with Bluehost because they are the number one recommended web host for WordPress by WordPress. In this short and concise tutorial video, I'm gonna walk you through everything that you need to know in order to properly set up a WordPress powered website with Bluehost and an independent domain name register like Namecheap, GoDaddy, Dynadot, etc. Creating a website with Bluehost is not too complicated and is fairly straightforward, but there are a few quirks that you need to be aware of as a beginner. In this tutorial video, we're going to begin by getting a domain name at a domain name registrar. Then I'm going to show you how to get a shared hosting account with Bluehost. Then we're going to install WordPress and I'm going to show you some professional backend settings for your website that you're going to want to know about. So if you're ready to get started, let's jump into my laptop and begin. Welcome to my laptop. Let's begin. So the process of getting set up with Bluehost and WordPress first begins with getting a domain name. Now, when you're at Bluehost.com, what you're going to notice is that each of these plans comes with a free domain name for one year. But I have to say that free is not free. OK, so it's free for the first year, but then you have to pay a renewal fee. So part of having a domain name is you have to pay a renewal fee every single year. And the renewal fee for Bluehost is a little bit high. It's not unreasonable, but you can get a better price using a domain name registrar. And my domain name registrar of choice is Namecheap. So domain names are start at $8.88 a year for .coms, and then the renewal rate is quite low. And you'll save money long term using Namecheap.com. And so to get a domain name is very simple. So you just come over here and type in whatever you want. So we'll type in my super amazing blog.com. Let's go ahead and search for that. Okay, so on the next page, it's going to tell you whether or not the domain name is even available for you to register. So if it doesn't say this add to cart, that means you have to come up with something else. You can use with Namecheap, you can use Beast Mode over here to give you a little bit more uh, detail about which kind of domain name you want to look for. You can also consider getting an alternative domain extension like .net or .co or whatever, but I definitely for your first website would strongly suggest you come up with something to get a .com. Anyways, when you're ready, just click the add to cart button. All right, and now we want to just go ahead and click the checkout right here. And that is it. So now we can buy our domain name. So we have our domain name registration and we can set it for one year up to 10 years. Okay, so you can pay for the domain name uh, in advance. I definitely suggest, you know, registering your domain name maybe for like two or three years up front. And then if your project kind of sticks around, you can come back into Namecheap and go ahead and register for something a little bit longer, like five or six years auto renew you can turn this on or off totally up to you i personally like to leave auto renew off uh, so i can make that decision whether or not i want to renew the domain name you get free who is protection so who is protection you know normally costs money and so if you want to go through like bluehost for example you don't get who is protection for free namecheap you get it for free which is another reason why i like namecheap and that's it so go ahead click confirm order and then you have to create a namecheap account submit payment and that's it Welcome to Bluehost.com. So Bluehost is actually the number one recommended web host by WordPress for WordPress. Now, this is not to say that they're the best web host ever, but they are ideal for complete beginners who are brand new to WordPress who need reliable shared hosting. I would describe them as like the Coca-Cola of web hosts. Anyways, to get started is very simple. You just click the big black button that says get started. There we go. Okay, so with Bluehost, you can't buy like a web hosting package on a monthly basis. You have to pick like one year, two years, or three years. Uh, so I personally would recommend that you get a two year shared hosting plan, personally, because in general, it's going to take you about two years to build a high traffic website. And then, you know, once your website has some traffic, you can move over to something like WPX hosting, uh, which is a good mid range web host. They're much more expensive than Bluehost. But again, if you're just starting out, Bluehost is fine. So I definitely would select 24 months. Now we come down here, you have a bunch of different plans. So you have basic plus choice plus and pro basic you get one website that's just way too limiting plus is pretty good you get unlimited websites but i personally like their choice plus because this gives you all the power and resources you need to build a high traffic website a website that's you know getting at least a thousand visitors a day which is still a fairly small website believe it or not but you have enough resources to build you know your websites to a level where you get a decent amount of traffic 
Now, you get a starter rate at $6.95 a month, which is fantastic. It normally renews at $17.99. The Plus plan renews at $12.99. So just make sure to pay attention to that. So that's help you make a choice between the two. I personally would go with Choice Plus, but Plus and Choice Plus is okay. Pro, you can also <laughs> go ahead and ignore because that's for people who already have a larger established website. Uh, you know, so that's not us. <laughs> We're just starting out. So anyways, go ahead and click on select. Okay, so now we have to set up a domain name. And so what we're specifically doing here is we're setting the primary domain name for our hosting account. Every hosting account needs a primary domain name. So you can either create a new domain name which registers a domain name through Bluehost or you can use a domain name that you own. So since we got our domain name at Namecheap, we should be using use a domain name that you own. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so let me go ahead and click next. Fantastic. So now all you have to do is go ahead and create an account and submit payment. So your account information, package information, make sure uh, it's correct here. So you can pick 12, 24 or 36 package extras. We do not need site lock security. You can uncheck that. Then your payment information. I have read and agreed to the terms of service and then go ahead and click submit. And it's that simple. Welcome to Bluehost.com. So once you submit payments, you're going to be presented with an onboarding process. You can just go ahead and click skip, skip, skip. And you want to get to this section right here. This is your dashboard for Bluehost. Right here is the primary domain name, the domain name that you bought at Namecheap and that you put in when you're getting your shared hosting account. Yours may say something different, may say something like temporary box one, two, three, four totally normal. The thing that we need to do now is update the name servers at Namecheap to have them point to Bluehost. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's set up our name servers. So this is really essential because we need to do this first. And after we do this, then we can install WordPress. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to navigate to your email. And every single web host always sends some type of like welcome email. Hey, thanks for signing up everyone. <laughs> okay. And so you want to find the welcome email from Bluehost. So the thing that we really want is the name servers. And with Bluehost, it's very simple. It's NS1 Bluehost and NS2 Bluehost. Now you need to go to your domain name registrar, which in this tutorial video is name it cheap. Now you want to go to where your domain name is and go to domain name. And then you want to find where it says name servers. And then you click the drop down and then you go to custom DNS. Okay. And then you just input NS1 Bluehost and NS2 Bluehost. Now, when you input it, make sure to click the little check mark right over here in order to save. And that's it. All right. And so then it takes about 15 to maybe half an hour max for everything to kind of propagate. And then your domain name should be coming up here and everything should be all set with regards to uh, setting up your website. And now we're ready to install WordPress. Okay, so installing WordPress with Bluehost is very easy. Actually, once you set name servers and let everything propagate, you should actually already have a website with WordPress installed, but I wanna walk you through the process starting from step one. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and click on manage site. I'm gonna to go to settings and let's delete this WordPress installation and we're gonna start from scratch. Okay, there we go. So now we're under my sites and I'm going to go ahead and click on add a site and we're going to be using WordPress over here to get started. Just click the get started button, site name and tagline. You can change this once you have WordPress installed on your site. So just put whatever you want in the name of your website is appropriate for this. All right, now I want you to go ahead and click on the advanced button right there. And here is where we can put in some personalized information. This is why I like doing it this custom way instead of letting Bluehost set everything up because it just automatically generates your username and password. We wanna have a little bit of control over this. So let me go ahead and put in an email, put in an admin username that you can remember and go ahead and set a password. Okay, when you're ready, go ahead and click on next. Okay, so now we can install WordPress on a domain of our choosing. So this is our primary domain name on our accounts. Now these are plugins. We're going to go ahead and uncheck everything. We don't need these installed. Now what it means by a directory is like if you put something here like this, it's going to install WordPress only on slash blog on the website. We don't want that. We want to install on the root domain name. So this is called your root domain. We want to install WordPress on our entire website, not in just a subsection of the website, if that makes any sense. So just go ahead and click on next. 
And that's it. <laughs> Congratulations. You just successfully installed WordPress on your domain name. So go ahead and click on log in to WordPress. And now your website will begin loading. Welcome to WordPress. So this is your WordPress dashboard. Now what I wanted to do actually is go ahead and log out. I just want to show you how to log into your website each and every single time. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to, going to want to navigate to something called WP-admin, okay? So you just go to yourwebsite.com WP-admin. And that's it. And so right here, you just put in the username or the email address, as well as the password that you just created. And that's how you log into your WordPress website each and every time. Now, one additional thing I would just want you to double check is to make sure that the SSL certificate for your website is working. So if you visit your website, it should have a little lock. It may not propagate like immediately, but after like half an hour, you should have a secure connection. And if you're having any type of issue, I just recommend coming back to Bluehost, going to the chat function and just telling them, hey, <laughs> the S I need an SSL certificate to be activated on my domain name and they should take care of it immediately. But anyways, everything should be working, but just in case you're in a situation where you don't have an SSL certificate and it's saying like a not secure or whatever, just contact Bluehost and they'll resolve the issue within a few minutes. Professional backend settings for our website. So welcome to WordPress. Now let's get to work. Uh, I'm going to show you what I do with every single new website that I start. So first things first, let's navigate over to where it says users. Now under users is where you can create different types of roles for your account. So right now we should have one username and the role should be administrator. So if you open this up, if you open this one up right here is where you can kind of change information. So you can come over here and you can type in some like name that's a little bit more logical and then you can have display name publicly as something like David. OK, and so if you came up with something really weird <laughs> for your WordPress admin login you know, with numbers or whatever, I definitely recommend doing this. Now, right down here, you have a little bit of a biographical information paragraph. Now, it depends on the WordPress theme that you use, if it this displays or not. But what this specifically is, if we come down here see how this little section of me with the image right there and this little piece of text that's all powered by here. Now, if you notice over here, we have something called profile picture. If you click on this, it opens up Gravatar. And so Gravatar is another service that you can sign up. Then you can associate an email with a specific image. OK, and it populates it automatically. So that's how this image is getting here. Uh, and that's re really all you have to do for this. And then you can come down here and change your password as you want on this page. Now, what I also suggest doing is going to add new and right here is where we can add in new users. So right down here, we have different roles, contributor, author, editor. Now, you reason why you, you would ever want to do this is like if your site gets large and you start having like writers, and you start hiring writers, then you can just go ahead and create like an author account. And then people can log into your website with their author account and put in their blog posts on their behalf. So you don't have to like micromanage everyone. It just gives you more flexibility. Also, so also for security reasons, I do recommend creating an editor account. And so logging to your website with an editor account, it just adds a layer of security. You don't have to, if you want to continue using your administrator account, that's totally fine. It's up to you, but just that's something that some people do is log into their website with an editor account for added security. All right. So now with that out of the way, let's go here to settings and let's navigate to permalinks. Now, what permalinks mean is permanent link. And so these are the links for your specific blog posts and pages of your website. Plain is terrible. P equals one, two, three. No. Day and name. This has dates. Dates are good for news oriented websites. If you're not producing content that is time sensitive, don't put dates in your URL. The best one to use is typically post name or a custom structure. So I personally like to click on post name, then click on custom structure, then click here slash blog slash post name. So if you look at the URL structure of uh, website create pro, I put everything under blog. This just gives a nice structure to the website it separates the blog post from the pages. You don't have to do it. It's totally up to you. If you want to use post name, that's fine. Uh, for larger websites, you're going to want to use something like category, then a post name, uh, totally up to you. But for most websites slash blog slash post name is just fine. Okay. So now let's navigate over to where it says plugins and with our default WordPress installation with Bluehost and WordPress, it gives us a lot of plugins we don't need. So we're going to go ahead and deactivate the Bluehost plugin because we don't need that. OK, let's go ahead and deactivate this creative mail. All right. Close this window and deactivate. Yeah, go away. <laughs> there we go. 
and then we have jetpack so let me just click these and we just want to go ahead and delete these and click OK all right there we go so now the only one we have activated is jetpack all right so a few things so first thing I want to go to add new and there's two essential plugins I really like the first one is called the Yoast SEO so what Yoast SEO does is it gives you a little bit more control over the on-page SEO of your website with over 5 million active installations it's one of the it's actually the most popular uh, WordPress SEO plugin anyways let's go ahead and activate it there we go okay so let's go ahead let's X out of that let's go ahead and add in one more plugin and this plugin I like to add is called smush let's enter and search for it there we go so it's smush lazy load images now what this plugin does is that every single time you upload an image to your website it decreases the file size to optimize it so for example like we come here and we take a look at say like a, an image right here this is an image this has been smooshed quote unquote with uh, that image optimization to make this as light and small as possible so our website loads more quickly and so smush it is really important and so that's it for now okay so i definitely recommend starting off with smush and yoast seo and leaving jetpack and now if you come over here to jetpack now you're going to going to have to create a jetpack account okay and so you're going to have to log in and go through the whole process uh, to get started but one thing I like about Jetpack is if you come over here to the traffic tab, once you have everything set up in your WordPress account, just go ahead right here and click on show related posts after content. And what that does is with your blog post, it automatically shows these little nice boxes at the bottom of your website, which helps click increase click through rate and keeps people on your site a little bit longer. And that's powered by Jetpack. And so that's that's literally the only thing I like about Jetpack is this related post functionality, okay? And that's it. So now you have Yoast SEO, you have that image optimization plugin, you have Jetpack. And one last thing is for blog posts, you have your categories and tag page. So let's navigate over to our categories page. Now for tags, you can ignore tags. I don't use tags. Categories, on the other hand, are very important. So with your blog post, you have to organize everything under a specific category. So for example, this is under domain names category. I recommend four to seven categories for your blog post. And then this is the dedicated category page. Okay. And so right here, you can eventually just go ahead and delete this on categories. Don't have weird categories like thoughts, blog, random. No, <laughs> no, like keyword rich, specific, not super wordy, like one or two words four to seven categories so like with like website create pro I, I have domain names web hosting website builders content marketing things that are related to like what my videos and these blog posts are all about okay and so that's why you want to kind of focus on that okay and so for your blog posts you want to make sure to organize everything under categories that are logical okay and so for website create pro i have five categories for you, I would recommend creating like maybe four to seven categories that are keyword rich, like one to two words long. Don't do things like blog, random thoughts, like no, 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 <laughs> like keyword rich and that are descriptive for what your website is about. So like this blog post is under categories under domain names. Then you come to the category domain name page. These are all the blog posts related to domain names on Website Career Pro. Here we go. A little introduction about what this page is all about. And so how does that work? So for example, I can come over here and we can come over here and create like a, I'll just create a sample category. We click on add a new category. All right. So let's just go ahead and click this to jump in. All right. So here we go. So we have the name, we have the slug, which is the uh, URL structure for the category. And then we have a nice little description, which is what this is right there. And then you have your Yoast SEO. And this is where you can kind of change the on page SEO for the piece of content. So for example, we come up here, it says domain names, advice, guides, and resource category. And so you can just we either we like this where it says sample archives like you know domain name archives whatever or change it to something unique then you can add in a meta description for this specific page so if you're like what's a meta description well if you type in website creative pro 
the meta description is this right here, okay? And so with uh, Yoast SEO, you have control over what it says by editing this section right there. And that's pretty much it. You are good to go with categories. Let's install a WordPress theme. So what's great about WordPress is you can install themes and those themes can help you design your website. So if we take a quick look at our website right now, we already have a theme installed. And so let's go ahead and navigate to appearance. Then you click on themes, okay? And there we go. So we right now have this specific theme activated. So we have our option to add in a new theme of our choice. We can either click this, add a new theme, or we can click this little button that says add new there. Whatever, it takes you to the same page. Now this is the directory, okay? This is the free WordPress directory of themes. What I would definitely suggest doing is either going to featured or clicking on popular in order to kind of filter out and look for themes that uh, you may potentially want to use. So I have tutorials on how to use the 2021 theme, 2020 theme, Astra, Hello Elementor, 2017, 2019 theme, uh, etc. So you can just, you know, if you want to learn more about how to use these, each of these themes individually, you can go ahead and do that. Now, what if you like buy a theme? Like, what if you buy a theme from somewhere and you like want to upload it to your website? What do you do? Well, for example, let's take a look at like Themeify Simple. They give away the simple theme for free. So let me go ahead and download it. And we're just going to wait. There we go. Okay, so it's downloaded. And I'm going to take Themeify Simple and I'm going to put this right over here on my desktop. So then I can upload it. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we'll drag and drop it there. Okay, so now let's navigate back to our website. Then you can click on upload theme. Then you have to choose the file that you want to upload and I'll click on Themeify Simple, okay? And leave it as a zip folder. Don't unzip it or it, just leave it as is. And that's gonna how it's going to be no matter what premium theme you buy. If you buy a premium theme for like the Divi theme or you buy something from ThemeForce, the process is the same. So now I just clicked on install now and it's waiting for uh, the theme to get And started. there we are. So it just successfully installed the theme. So let's go back to our themes and we should have Themeify simple. And there we go. It's literally that simple to upload any theme of your choosing if you buy, say, a premium theme from a marketplace. Now, one additional thing you could do is go ahead and once you activate the theme of your choosing that you really like, make sure to go ahead and delete all the other themes within your installation. So just click on the theme and then right down here, you have this red delete button. And again, just go through and delete all themes. Again, this is just for security purposes, just in case there's any type of problem. It's just a small little thing you can do to just make your site more secure. So just go ahead and delete every single theme that is not in use. And last, let's cover blog posts and pages. So pages is very simple. This is for like content that doesn't make sense to organize into any type of category. Things like your about page, contact, privacy policy, terms of use, that sort of thing. Those should be pages. Everything else you publish on your site should be a blog post and it has to be organized in a category as I stated earlier with WordPress. So let me go ahead and add in a new blog post. Now the structure of a blog post right up top here is your H1 title tag, okay? And so this is your title right up top there. So just put that in, title, there we go. Now here is where you can just begin writing. And so with within WordPress with these blocks, you can just type away. Now you wanna make sure that you break things up as appropriate. So this is an H2 title tag. So we come over here, I click on plus, I click on heading, H2, click, click down here, I have H3, 4, 5. H2 is a subheading of H1. H3 is a subheading of H2, if that makes any sense. So just make sure to just use your headings as appropriate. You can always click the little information sign to kind of get the uh, information, see if the structure is correct, okay? And so that's kind of like how you want to approach this, if that makes any sense. And so right here, you can just continue on. So right here, I'll put in that title right there. There we go, okay? We can click over here to check. So everything looks good, okay? So you have the title, H2. Now, right here, you can click plus and you can click heading. Now, I could change this to H1, but again, you just want one H1 title tag for every single blog post and page, and everything else should be H2 and H3. So what I mean is like, for example, uh, if we come down here, like all of these are H2 title tags, okay? Because there's no subheading, but say if I wanted to have like an H3 tag, you know, maybe I could take this sentence right there and make this an H3 of this one, if that makes any sense. 
So and that's it, okay? So get to work just creating content. Now you can click on the plus sign, click on browse all, and these are all additional blocks that you can add in, things like images over here, you can add in videos very easily, you can add in separators, you can play around with this as you like. And there's also various WordPress plugins that add in even more blocks, add in a little bit more functionality. One of my favorite is the stackable page building Gutenberg block uh, plugin. <laughs> That's a mouthful. But I really like this plugin because it adds in a lot of helpful blocks. Another one I like is the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. This is another uh, block builder uh, that just adds in, again, like additional blocks over here that are just really helpful and really useful. So for example, I often get asked like, uh, from people like, how do how did you design this little box? Like this is being powered by this specific plugin. And that's it, okay? And so that, you, know, you can add in videos, images, text, H1, H2, H3, title tags. It's really that simple. Now, you want to make sure to click over the post option over here and right over here, make sure the permalink, you can change it to whatever you want. And so the permalink right here, and then you have your categories, make sure to check one category. You don't want to put a blog post into two categories, just one blog post per one category. And then the last is you have your feature image right here. So you click on this. Then you can drag and drop an image in uh, to set as the feature image. So if we come back over here to Website Create Pro, let me click on the blog. All of these are feature images, okay? And so each blog post I have, in, you know, I added a feature image in, and that's it, okay? And that's being powered by this section right there. And it's really that simple for you to get started with blogging. And that's it, okay? And so now you have should have a strong overview about how to properly get set up with WordPress and Bluehost. We covered various ways to install themes, plugins, how to blog, professional backend settings, etc. So that is it for this tutorial. All right, everyone, that's it for this tutorial video on how to properly create a WordPress powered website using Bluehost and an independent domain name registrar. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and hit that like button. My name is David, WebsiteCreatePro.com. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.